you know, we're building on two principles so far. One, what is the goal once we know what the goal is? Number two, we understand that things only happen with the help and support of others. Welcome to Timelines, episode 286. On this episode, we have Derek Uehara, who is a candidate for treasurer for the great state of Nevada. So tell me this about you. Happy to do that. You know, I was born in Hawaii. Uh, my family's been there for, for a while now. I was one of four, four children. Uh, my parents were very big on community service, public service. The kids took that to heart. I myself am a former U.S. Army Reservist, but my sister is the highest ranking military person. She is a lieutenant colonel, uh, and she's done two tours in the Middle East. We're so proud of her and thankful for um, all the veterans who have defended our country and allowed us to live these great lives that, that we do in America. We want to thank your sister, too. The Reserves and the Guard have really paid their dues since 9-11. Yeah, multiple trips over. You yeah, know. two is a lot. That's a lot. What does she do? What? Uh, she's a lo- logistics specialist. A lot. Oh, great. So, you know, whenever they want to do something, she's drawn in there to figure out how do we actually make it happen uh, in moving the personnel and the equipment. So you went to high school in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. Where, where in Hawaii? Where's the high school? Uh, it's Castle High School in, in Kaneohe. Okay, very good. Are you and familiar then, with the islands? A little bit. I spent some time there as a kid. Okay. Um, I won't go into a lot of detail, but I spent more time than you can imagine. <laughs> in legal or illegal? No, legal. Legal. I was legal. I just want to clarify that. Okay. Yeah, just uh, more time. We had a condo in Hilo, and my cousins had a 40-footer in the yacht club. So okay. I got to go over. Well, you know, it rained a lot in Hilo, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They just had the floods. Mm-hmm. They're having floods. Yeah. Real bad. So out of high school, you went in the reserves. Congratulations. I mean, I think it's a great thing to do as a kid. So when you went in the reserves, did you take advantage of the educational benefits from the military? You no, know, I did. They had a program that, that uh, the state would pay for your tuition. So, so I took advantage of that. Um, and, you know, I ended up transferring to University of Washington. I'd gone there one summer. And, um, you know, a young person, I think, I think you're open to adventure, looking to mm-hmm. do different things, looking to discover yourself. I actually got there during the summer and it was, the weather was gorgeous. Mm. And, you know, it's green, uh, there's water, the sky is blue. Uh, it's a beautiful place. And I decided I wanted to, to go to school there, not knowing that it's not that way the entire year. No, it's very gloomy. <laughs> it's very gloomy. And, raining. and you know what it's like um, spending time in Hilo. So yeah. uh, very similar to Hilo, except it's colder. Yeah, much colder. Like much, much colder. Yeah. So you went to uh, college in Hawaii for two years? Where'd you go there? Oh, the University of Hawaii. And you, oh, okay. Yeah. And you left and to come to mainland. That's a big decision, though. Um, I, I guess you, you could look at it that way. I guess you're a young person, though, you know, you, yeah. you're looking for uh, adventure. You want to discover yourself. Uh, you want, you know, I wanted new experiences, so uh, I took advantage of that. So finding out more about you, you got married. You have kids, family? We have, uh, we have a 17-year-old. He's a junior in high school. Very good. In Las Vegas. In Henderson. In Henderson. Oh, you're in Henderson. Yeah. Um, when did you come to Las Vegas or Henderson area? Uh, came in 2000. So okay. I've been in Nevada now for 18 years. That's a long time. It's, long, uh, Nevada, well, it's, it's all really relative. Grown. It's all relative. I mean, yeah. it's gone by very quickly. Uh, but when I, when I think about it, when you ask me about it, I go, you know what? You, you know, it is a long time. So between Washington and coming to Nevada, what was your track? Um, from Washington, I went to California for graduate school. You know, I earned an, a mass, uh, an MBA. Where? Uh, Claremont Graduate Claremont. School, now Claremont Graduate University. Uh, I studied with Peter Drucker. And, um, you know, it was very attractive to me because Peter Drucker spoke about how Management principles applied not just to business, but to government, to the not-for-profit sector. And ironically, here, you know, here I am you know, running for public office where a lot of the principles that uh, have worked for business, I think, are, are directly applicable to government and the not-for-profit sector. Very good. Very good. I mean, I'm, we'll talk more about your campaign towards the end, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm happy you're running. It definitely is a commitment, and it takes you away from your family and business to some extent. You have to have a family who really backs you up. I do, and I'm very fortunate. My wife is very supportive. She's here right now. We'll take a picture and make sure that's up. You can take a picture of her. Thanks for being here. So what's your wife's name? Her name is Janny. Janny. Okay, and she's out there. She's like your press secretary out there running around. Uh, Jan, I'm very fortunate. Janny, Janny's got some um, very specialized skills, and she helps me in, in a number of different ways. And we always ask a question at the end, like, where's the best place to eat in Henderson or the Las Vegas area? That's a great that's question. The end. Oh, okay. <laughs> but she has a Thai restaurant, so I'm taking a wild guess. It might be <laughs> Thai food. So driving on, as we go in, get ready for the break here, 
Um, how did you get into the profession you're in now, which is the financial management? You got your advanced degrees? I do. Um, you know, I've got, I got two competing drives that I, I try and fulfill, you know, in my career. Number one is analysis. I enjoy analyzing. Uh, I enjoy analyzing financial data. Um, but I also enjoy working with people and helping people. So, you know, I'm very fortunate to, to have come across a profession of financial planning where we do just that. We analyze data. Uh, we interact with people. Uh, our, our ultimate goal is to serve people and help them prepare for all the goals in their lives. Yeah, I was going to say, we just finished our taxes, and I hate taxes. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I just hate doing it. I, mean, I, I believe in paying taxes so we can defend the country. Absolutely. Not a lot of taxes, but Absolutely. I do believe in fair, sure. fair share. But I just hate preparing taxes. What do you think about the mounds of paperwork? If you've got a partnership, a K-1, you got all these different things, elements. Hey, anything that would simplify the process, I think, would be welcomed by by the majority of Americans. I mean, it is a, a pretty big task we take on. It's one thing I like about Nevada. We don't have an income tax. Amen. I've got a retirement from the military, and it's just so nice that we don't have an income tax, especially you're not taxing a business right. to some extent. We do have a newer tax, though, which we won't go into more detail. It's like a, a mill tax. It's uh, based on your gross, yeah. but it's very small. So going on, as we go into the break, we're going to come back and talk about your life and success principle. Okay, look forward to it. Thanks. Now on our break, I want to thank our sponsors, the silver sponsors for the RMC. Without their support, this would not be possible because we develop marketing and processes and uh, educational training with their support. Also, I want to support one of my biggest sponsors, of course, is my wife, Karen Conrad. She works for KW1 Group as a broker here in the greater Reno area for all your real estate needs. Now, without further ado, let's get right back into this episode with Derek. So we're coming back from the break, and we've got you out of California and into Nevada. And we're going to talk, before we go into any more detail, we're going to talk about your life and success principles. Okay. So you mentioned three. I'm going to mention those and we'll talk about them. What is the goal? All about people. It's all about people and follow up. So mm -hmm. what is the goal? What's that mean to you? What that means is you always want to start from the idea of knowing what is it you're trying to accomplish. You know, I think sometimes it can be easy to get confused, confused activity with making right. progress. And I think before you get busy, you want to identify what your goal is. Once you're clear on the goal, and it does take, in many cases, uh, some, some thinking, some reflection. It's hard work. I mean, Henry Ford said that, right? I mean, thinking is such hard work. That's why so few people do it, mm -hmm. right? But it's very valuable to know what are we trying to accomplish. So I always have to start that way, you know, in, in myself, my life. Uh, when I take on a project, what is the goal? Uh, in this case, uh, during my campaign for state treasurer, what is the goal? What are we trying to right. accomplish? That is, that's a starting point. Well, you have hurdles in the meantime. You've got to win a primary first, mm -hmm. which is different than winning the general. Mm -hmm. And you only have, what, two candidates right now? The two of us. Uh -huh. Okay. So you have a, a pretty good chance just right off the top, randomly, of, of being one of those two. You know, I'm just saying, you just without any, doing any campaigning, if neither one of you campaign. I love your outlook, Bill. <laughs> Thank you. I love the outlook. <laughs> so I don't know how that came out right. So once you go on to that, the general election is going to be tougher. So you go win the general election. Then once we win the general, what, what's your goal? Once I win the general? Yeah, once you're treasurer of the state of Nevada. Well, my, my goal is really twofold. Number one, uh, I want to maintain uh, or manage the Nevada's assets responsibly and prudently. You know, that, that's what you would think of uh, when you think of the treasurer. Uh, the second goal really is something that most people would not think of, and that is to inform our state about a number of things. Number one, about what the, the state treasurer actually does. I've been to many group uh, events when I ask people. No one knows what the treasurer does. Uh, we need our residents to know so that they can be informed, they can be involved, and that they can hold the, the treasurer accountable. Uh, number two, and I'm very passionate about some of the education programs that the treasurer uh, administers. You know, Nevada's a great place to live. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is that we rank 50th in the country in education. The 5 to 9 plan that, you know, I offer as a financial advisor that Nevada has, less than 4% of our students have the plan. And similar to knowing what the treasurer does, when I ask groups if they're aware of the 5 to 9 plan, very few hands go up. So what I want to do is uh, focus on informing our residents uh, about these programs so that they can participate and benefit from what the programs have to offer. Is it a 5 9 or 5 2 9? It's 5 2 9. 5 2 9. Mm -hmm. That is like a scholarship program where the kids can take some money and go to. You know, schools. what that is, the 5 to 9 is part of the IRS code. 
-hmm. allows adults to open an account on behalf of a minor. You can be a parent or grandparent. Um, you would invest in the stock market. When the child hits 18, you take the funds out tax-free, and you can use it for a two-year college. You can use it for a four-year college. Um, in the last several years, we, you know, I think uh, most people recognize that college is not for everyone. You can also use this for technical training schools, for vocational training schools. And with the recent tax bill that the president and Congress approved, you can even use it for K through 12. So um, a lot of our folks who want choice, the 5 to 9 offers you that choice. Right. It's a wonderful program. Again, less than 4% of our students have it here in Nevada. I want to change that. And we're going to start by informing our residents that, that about the existence low. of this program. I imagine some states are higher. It's just sure. lack of knowledge. Sure. Very good. So the second point, it's all about the people. Mm -hmm. You know, we, you know we, we live in a world where everything you want to do or accomplish happens only with the support and the cooperation of others. That's just a guiding principle. So um, when I'm working on a project, I want to know the people involved. I, I want to know what's important to them. I want to know how we can help them accomplish and achieve what they want. So, you know, we're building on two principles so far. One, what is the goal? Once we know what the goal is. Number two, we understand that things only happen with the help and support of others. And that's why it's all about the people. Very good. And then finally, follow up. Follow up is crucial. You know, I think it's easy to talk, to say things, right? But what takes a little more effort is actually doing what you say you're going to do, right? So we'll bump right back up to principle number two. It's all about the people. When you work with people, you make commitments. I'm going to do this. It can be as simple as saying, I'm going to call you later today. Well, now we go back to principle number three. Well, you better make sure you do that. You need to follow up and call them if you told them you're going to do that, right? I'll get that information to you. You make sure you do that. And if you can do that, now you start building a relationship where trust is built mm -hmm. and you can focus on actually accomplishing the goals that we set out in principle number one. What is the goal? So know what the goal is. Understand that people are a vital part of that and know that the, the oil that makes human relationships goal is following up, doing what you're saying you're going to do. Very good. Now, I think if people listen to this podcast and the netcast, they understand why you're running. You're passionate, but we're going to talk a little bit more about your campaign. Mm -hmm. When did you decide to run? You know, this happened this summer. I was approached by someone who, who mentioned that because of my finance background, you know, I might be a good candidate for state treasurer. They asked if I'd ever thought about it. I said, no. They said, go look into it. So, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier, I'm a very analytical person. I like reviewing data. I went up, uh, looked at the position of treasurer and to see what was actually involved. I got excited. Um, I got excited because a job is a very focused job. There are only three responsibilities. Number one, you, you handle cash management and the management of a couple of investment accounts. You know, I'm a financial advisor. I'm registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. This is what I do. And certainly I thought, you know, as Nevada's treasurer, I will manage the assets responsibly and prudently. Second responsibility is dealing with unclaimed property. So if someone passes on and have, they have not identified a, a beneficiary or that beneficiary can't be located, that property ultimately reverts to the state. Nevada currently has just under $800 million in unclaimed property. You know, this is cash and assets that belong to the people. As Nevada's treasurer, I will get their cash and assets back to them as quickly as possible. I understand urgency. And the number three is managing the education accounts. And we, we just touched on that a little bit. Right. The treasurer administers the five to nine plan, the education savings account, as well as a prepaid tuition plan. And I'm, I've always been about education. I got excited when I saw that this was part of the treasurer's responsibilities. And uh, I'll repeat, you know, as treasurer, I will work to get our state aware of all these programs so that our students can benefit and we can invest in the future. So let's look at your website a second. So uh -huh. it's DerekForNevada.com. Yes. And if you go to that website or even just Google your name, you'll come up and that's a, I always like to look at the websites, the background. So you got about news, volunteer. So how is the campaign doing? We got a little video in there too. That's there's a little video. That's actually me giving a little presentation, introducing myself to the public, letting people know, you know, what the campaign is about. Uh, you scroll down right there. You got my, I'm very proud of that endorsement. You know, I live in Henderson, mm -hmm. uh, second largest city in Nevada, one of the top five safest cities in the entire United States. I saw that. I Did just read an article that? on that. Yeah. Well, I'm so honored. Mayor Pro Tem of uh, Henderson, Dan Stewart, has endorsed me. So I appreciate that. Um, is that the Congressional District 3 down there, too? It is. It leans. It does include. I mean, we might even have a Republican in that seat this year. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, side track. in terms of how the campaign has gone, I think, you know, this is my 19th trip up to Reno since mm -hmm. August. Um, so I've been up here to, to get the word out. Uh, but back home, you know, I have the endorsement of our, our Mayor Very Pro good. Tem. 
I'm honored to have the endorsement of uh, the Vegas Voice. Vegas Voice is the largest senior publication in Nevada. They've endorsed me. Um, I'm honored to have the endorsement of Tim Brooks. Tim Brooks is the owner of the Emerald Island Casino, um, recent chairman of the Henderson Chamber of Commerce. So that's kind of down south. The momentum has really picked up lately. I was just up here in Reno last week. So honored to get the endorsement of the Washoe County Republican Assembly. Congratulations. Thank you for that. Uh, at the same time, we also got the endorsement of the Nevada Republican Assembly. I uh, got a call last week from the Republican National Hispanic Assembly of Nevada. They endorsed me, and I, I said, you know, I'm honored by this. I said, you know, what did I do to earn this? And they said, we like what you're doing. We like what you're about. We think you can make a difference, and Nevada needs, you know, to make a difference. So I was so honored by that. And then just last week, um, honored again to get the endorsement of Douglas County Sheriff Ron Perini. Very good. When we met earlier this year, he looked at me. He said, you know, we speak the same language. And he elaborated by saying that, listen, if, if we don't invest in our young people and they end up making choices that lead to crime, now it becomes his problem, right, in law enforcement and the rest of our law enforcement personnel here in the state of Nevada. So the choice is, is, is pretty straightforward. We either invest in them or we as society are going to end up dealing with the consequences. And that's why there's so much at stake for this campaign. You know, I know some people have, have wondered. They say, listen, this is great. You're investing in the kids. But what about the rest of us? You know, what if we don't have kids? What if our kids are grown up? What about us? What do you do for us? I said, listen, I, I get that initial thought, but here's how it's all connected, right? If our young people don't have productive economic futures, what are they going to do, number one? And number two, where, where do they go? And the answer is, they're still here. They're still here amongst us in our great state, and they may be tempted to make some choices that, that are not in their best interests and ultimately not in our interest. Crime, drugs, human trafficking becoming a bigger and bigger issue. We need to proactively give them an option. We need to give them a future so that they can be productive members of our society. We need to invest in Nevada's future because the consequences potentially will impact all of us here in the state. Everyone wants their kids coming back to, back to the state after school. And a lot of kids do come back to Nevada. They love it here, especially northern Nevada and Reno, and Reno area. Mm-hmm. A lot of people love the mountains and mm-hmm. skiing. Well, great. It's well, great you understand, place. right? We, and Henderson's we got a great name, too. Henderson, great place. By the way, Henderson and Las Vegas, two different things, beasts, aren't they? <laughs> They're two separate cities. You know, Las Vegas, of course, the largest city in the state. Henderson, second largest city. Yep. So I want to thank you very much. How can the listener get a hold of you? You know what? Go to my website, DerekForNevada.com, D-E-R-E-K-F-O-R-N-E-V-A-D-A.com. You can go online and make a contribution. Um, you can also send us an email. You can also visit us on Facebook. Same thing, Derek for Nevada. And we always have that one last question, but I think you know what it is. Where's the best place to go to eat? Oh, that's an easy one. You saved the easiest one for last. The best place to go in Nevada is Satay Thai Bistro. It's on 3900 Paradise. It's been named the best Asian restaurant in Las Vegas. Incredible food. Been around 13 years. They're doing a lot of things right, and that's why people keep coming back to it. Satay Thai Bistro. 3,900 Paradise. Well, I will eat there next time I'm there. I always eat wherever when they recommend. You gotta I love eat. it. I you, love gotta, it. you got a mouth, Bill. You got to eat. We <laughs> welcome you to Satay, okay? Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for uh, hanging out there. We did this last minute. Normally, I don't do this, but we did this like on the cuff. So you're, Happy to do it. So Thank you it for done. having me. Thanks Take for care. having me, Bill. Thanks. Hi, this is Bill, and thank you for watching. Go ahead, and if you're not signed in, sign into your Gmail. Go right up here and subscribe to RMC TV. And go over here, watch a couple more videos. Link to our website at republicanmenisclub.org. And finally, make sure you go down and leave a comment. The comments really help. See you on the next video.